hi everyone i hope you all are doing good in my today's session i'm going to explain about uh, entity framework core exception which will happen in most of our programming scenarios okay so what is that exception this is uh, the exception says that system dot invalid operation exception the instance of entity type cannot be tracked because another instance with the same key is already being tracked okay so the moment you are trying to operate an entity okay uh, or you are trying to add an entity which has the same primary key which is the primary key value basically okay and if there is already one object which entity framework is tracking that entity or that object and if you are trying to update it again then this exception will occur so what are the various reasons for this error and what are the possible solutions i'm going to explain first of all a uh, reason for error the db context object has been registered as singleton guys in web applications registering db context object as singleton is a big offense okay because basically you are sharing your db context object across thousands of requests or http requests i can say so what is the solution the solution is to register the db context object with a scoped or transient lifetime okay so just make use of uh, the services dot add scoped or add transient in order to register your db context object second scenario we are trying to update an entity uh, which ef core is already tracking with the same primary key value okay as i already explained in the above scenario in order to update an entity first detach it from the change tracking okay for this particular scenario what you have to do is as a solution first you have to detach it from the change tracking and then call the update method on that particular db set and then call the save changes okay so how the sequence goes this is your db context object okay call the entry method and pass the entity object you would like to or you are you are trying to update okay to this entry method and dot state equal to you at you assign entity state equal to detach by this way you are already detaching an entity which is being tracked by ef core now using the db context set object you will extract the db set for school entity and then you update that entity by passing it to the update method and then call the save changes on the db context object this should save uh, sorry this should uh, basically solve the issue of this invalid operation exception which we are discussing basically third scenario when we forget to add the entity configuration for primary key okay so what happens is uh, while configuring our entity in code uh, while uh, while the phase of on model creating of our db context object mistakenly we would have forgot to add this key okay the entity dot has key you basically need to configure that entity in such a way that the db entity dot has key and you have to specify the column or the property which is meant for primary key if you omit this line and if you try to add or update entities then there is a high probability that you will end up with this exception so solution is just add uh, this uh, particular statement on your entity class that is entity dot has key and specify the entity's primary key property basically this should solve the problem fourth uh, possible reason why this exception could occur you are using the default change tracking mechanism provided by ef core and trying to update an entity which is already tracked by ef core this is i have already explained same uh, as the above scenario okay uh, just use uh, these three lines of code that should solve the problem so i don't want to get into deeper into this point again now one more possible scenario is the same entity being registered across multiple db contexts this particular scenario is possible when you are following domain driven design and mistakenly you have introduced the same entity in multiple db contexts okay so this could cause this problem for example you have two db contexts say so classroom db context and then you have administration or admission db context just an example a trivial example and in both context you have configured entity student 
okay and if any one of the db context is playing with the entity state like uh, attaching it detaching it and another entity tries to perform any update operation you will end up in getting that exception so what you have to do always try to keep an entity to one db context now one more scenario is in case of primary key created with multiple columns a composite primary key where you are not using a single column name but you are using multiple column names to construct a primary key in database but while configuring it in entity framework core uh, code configuration you forgot to mention a single or multiple column that's it this will cause again this exception okay so what we have to do we must add all columns of the composite primary key in ef core code configuration so simple example i have taken model builder dot entity user dot has key where i am basically passing a lambda expression which specifies what are the two columns i have used as primary key for my table that is user basically that is user dot id and user dot email id so if you follow this uh, uh, yeah if you follow all of these solutions okay if you face this issue and if any if your issue belongs to any one of these possible uh, cases then apply these fixes i think you should get rid of this exception so the above solutions will help us to get rid of the issue but the better design of your repository pattern will keep these kind of issues away okay so just remember that it may be possible we are making use of different kind of approaches while manipulating our database or sorry ef core entities or the way we are handling various db operations dml operations like update insert delete using the db context object so what is the good design is that you should design your repository pattern in such a way that you can get away or you can get rid of this kind of issues and there is one more good api or uh, method provided by microsoft for db context which is called as no tracking so the best approach for repository pattern implementation in ef core is that usage of the method on db set class t is your entity dot as no tracking method so basically the moment you apply as no tracking on your db set none of your entities are being tracked guys trust me this will boost your application performance okay because in order to track the entity framework uses a inbuilt uh, tracking mechanism or a tracking machine which will keep on tracking you all your entities so it is basically little time consuming and uh, resource extensive i can say so what you can do is basically you can just make use of this as no tracking mechanism so in this way you are not at all tracking you are not uh, making use of the tracking uh, feature provided by ef core okay so your all entities are normally treated like uh, poco objects like plain old c sharp objects kind of okay so what could be a good repository pattern or a repository you can write using this method i have uh, i am showing a small example i hope uh, this will be useful for you for you people so these are the namespaces which i need in order to construct my repository okay so what is there so public class repository of generic type t where t is basically your entity and if you see it basically implements i repository interface which provides all these standard public uh, method contracts guys okay so that is there in i repository of t and where t must be a super entity or it should derive from super entity okay so whatever entity you pass to this uh, generic class as a parameter type parameter it should inherit from super entity and in super entity you keep some properties like your uh, primary key you can use id for example for all of your entities you can use id as a property to mention your primary key okay so keep such properties like it uh, so for example id okay or identification id you can say or id and then created date updated date time the traceable properties of your entities you can keep inside this super entity okay and there that way you are basically providing a common set of properties which can be shared by all your entities so each entity should be having an identity in terms of a id column and then it should also have a traceable entities like its created date okay uh, updated date created by 
you can put their uh, users id who created it and updated by you can put the users id who is updating the entity basically so you are basically enabling the auditing to your entities okay in your database tables okay so that's all about this super entity so look at the pattern now the repository basically the repository class itself simple it has a member db context it has a db set of t okay which we call entities okay now what i'm going to do is basically i will receive my db context as a dependency injection to my repository class and i will assign the context to this context object and for entities i will assign the context dot set of t the entity i am currently dealing with okay so i received a db set object here guys basically so context dot set of t always returns a db set object for your entity or your underlying database table i can say even in a clearer manner okay and then look at the methods implemented basically okay public i queryable of t that is entity get all so what i am returning return underscore entities which is a db set of your entities is basically db set of your entity for example db set of user so underscore entity dot as queryable very good uh, practice you are not at all uh, uh, you are not at all uh, bringing anything into your server memory okay before manipulating it so ask variable will first convert whatever query you construct to a sql statement and then it will execute on your server so underscore entities dot as variable dot as no tracking just mark this method over here as no tracking the moment you put this call right none of your entities are being tracked this will boost the performance of your apis and then we will go to get again underscore entities dot where if the id is matching with the any of the entities okay entities id i can say then simply return the single or default again as no tracking don't track it and then addition very simple the supplied entity is not equal to null then what i'm going to do is entity dot created date that's what i was uh, talking about the super entity this class having this property that is uh, created date equal to assign the utc timestamp or whatever appropriate for you underscore entities that is db set dot add entity and context dot save changes this will insert a record into database table okay and then add range you can add a range of entities which is uh, basically extended version of add where you can uh, where you can basically add a range of entities very simple underscore entities dot add range entities and save the changes simple update the most important thing guys because this exception is always occurs this instance of uh, entity type cannot be tracked because of another instance with the same key is being tracked so this exception usually happens with update operation so just have a look how it is implemented if entity is not equal to null entity dot updated date that's what we are setting in order to track who updated it and at what time they updated so you can put one more statement here entity dot created by sorry entity dot updated by equal to the user's value but usually i achieve it in my service classes i don't give that responsibility to my repository because my repository should not worry about such things so my service will update the entity dot updated by value from the service itself i will get that value only here i am setting the date time value which makes sense okay for this i am not required to do any manipulations here with respect to user okay so entity dot updated equal to current date timestamp and then underscore entities dot attach entity okay so if you provide uh, yeah if you provide your attention to my get method see i am returning whenever i do on my whenever uh, i basically call this get method on my repository that is a user repository dot get okay and pass the id i'm basically getting a user object as no tracking so if i make changes to that object and if i want to update or save it then what i am going to do is basically i'm going to attach it to my entities that is db set okay and then underscore context dot entry of that uh, entity dot state equal to i will make it modified because i have changed some properties and then call the context dot save changes now by following this approach trust me you will never receive that exception because you are basically telling entity framework that in order to update my entity okay first i have to come here okay 
first of all i am using uh, no tracking mechanism so i am not required to detach anything okay only thing what i have to do is in order to update anything first i have to attach it to my entities collection okay and then set its state to modified and then save the changes that's it okay and delete is very simple as you people know and also a query method which basically returns a i queryable equivalent of your db set okay as no tracking so that uh, a lazy execution and execution will happen with filters on sql server not in your server memory okay so ideally this is what i would prefer for a repository pattern very simple straightforward no redundancy or no redundancies no extra logic has been added here okay simply while uh, registering your repository just register in this way okay uh, services dot uh, you can say add scoped or add transient i repository don't pass anything just the brackets comma repository of t that's it i think you can you can basically uh, inject this repository for any kind of entity you have in your application okay it will work automatically no need to keep on creating uh, different kind of repositories for each uh, and every entity you have in your application okay there is no need of that because your repository usually end up with end up with doing the crud operations right create update delete and um, yeah uh, create update and removal sorry crud yeah so that's it uh, i hope uh, you people understood uh, i think how we can how we can basically first of all uh, uh, get a solution when we encounter this kind of exception with the entity framework core okay and also we have gone through a repository pattern which can avoid this kind of exceptions okay prevention is better than cure okay that's what this particular repository class okay uh, provides the solution okay prevention is better than cure but if you have implemented something else and you are facing issue for any of these possible reasons apply these solutions i think you should get rid of this exception okay thank you for listening and have a nice day guys